Yo, what's happening, Atlanta Bird Gang? It's your boy, Toddy Jones, checking in with a video today. Hey, before we get started, y'all, do your boy a big, big, huge favor. Please push that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell also. When you hit the notification bell, your YouTube will always send you a notification anytime we drop content. And that way, you, you know, you're always up to speed on what we do. But once again, please hit that like button for your boy. You know what I'm saying? Again, that's always a YouTube thing. Once once YouTube see it starts generating likes, it'll start shooting a video out of other places and, and more impressions. So do your boy a big favor. Thank you in advance. So let's get to the subject of the video. Michael Vick. Michael Vick. Will the Falcons put former star quarterback Michael Vick into the Falcons' ring of honor? Our most recent inductee was Todd McClure, who went in this season. So that leads me to wonder, will the Falcons put Michael Vick in there? It, 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 it's, it's, it's probably going to be controversial it'll probably be debated between falcons fans should he go in should he not go in so i decided let's talk about it you know what i'm saying let's talk about it you know i'll tell you what i think you tell me what you think you know so let's go ahead and get the uh get everything on the table as we all know vic was originally drafted by the atlanta falcons the number one pick in the nfl draft um, and also, I, mu I must say, also the very first black quarterback to be drafted number one in the NFL. So um, he made history on draft day when he got drafted because that's quite an accomplishment. And that's something that's going to live forever. But anyway, he was drafted by the Falcons. Um, and we already know what happened with, with him and, and getting in trouble with the dog. So we, we won't dig too deep into that on this video. You know, we won't go into all the details. You know, uh, he got in trouble. He served his time, came home, lived life as a noble citizen, a mentor. Um, some would say even a role model. Also played with Philadelphia Eagles and a few other teams among that time. So we all know that story. Now, since we are telling a little bit of that story, a lot of people will say that's the main reason Vic should not get into our ring of honor because he disgraced the team, disgraced himself, disgraced Arthur Blaine, disgraced the city of Atlanta, and, and of course, his himself and his own family. So some people say, of course not. Vic should not go into our ring of honor simply because of that reason. You know, that'll be some people's stance. And, um, and also to um, compound on that, some people will also say, well, hey, he didn't even play here long enough. No way he can get into the ring of honor with the dog fighting stuff and then him not playing here very long. No, absolutely not. On the other hand, some people will say, well, of course, Mike Vick should be in the Falcons ring of honor. You can't write the story of the Atlanta Falcons without the Michael Vick chapter, whether that be good or bad. Um, some will say Michael Vick changed the culture of the Falcons when he was here. Some will say Michael Vick. Some will even argue that he put the Atlanta Falcons on the map. Now, I won't personally, my opinion, I won't take it that far. I think the Falcons were already on the map prior to Vic, but I will say he, he took the Falcons brand and he took it to places that it had not been before. Uh, make no mistake about it. Vic was an international superstar when he was here. Vic made us must-see TV, you know, and he brought a, a, a lot of fans to Atlanta, um, and, some, and a good bit of them are still here. So, um, you know, he, he, he definitely made his impact when he was in Atlanta, uh, it, it, it was known at that time as the Michael Vick experience. And boy, was it ever an experience back at the Georgia Dome during those Michael Vick days. Um, Vick had the number one selling jersey in the NFL at one point in time. And I'm sure that's the only Atlanta Falcon to ever do that in history. 
He had his own signature shoe with Nike, which is still a popular shoe today. You still see people rocking Vicks today. Uh, he was on the cover of Madden. That's an accomplishment in itself. The, the first and only Falcon to ever get the cover of Madden. That's something that Matt Ryan never got. That's something that Julio Jones never got. And, you know, Madden wasn't around back in Dion's days when he played for Atlanta. Um, so, you know, you got to keep that in mind also. Let's take a, let's, you know, let's look at uh, some some data, if we can, and also some numbers. Uh, Michael Vick was an Atlanta Falcon for six years. Um, he started a total of 67 games for the Falcons. So, like I said earlier, some people will argue like, hey, man, he just didn't play here long enough. Now, keep in mind also, he, Vic, Vic was a three- time pro bowler in Atlanta in those six years and really technically he was a three-time pro bowler in only four eligible seasons and I know you're saying with well, Tidy, what do you mean four eligible seasons well of course he didn't start the first year I think he played I think he started two games as a rookie so you know you're not gonna make a pro bowl only starting two games and also he missed essentially the entire year of one year of uh, one season when he, you know, injured his leg. So really he had four eligible seasons and he made the Pro Bowl uh three of those also. Um also may I add, believe it or not, guys, Michael Vick is the most proficient starting quarterback for the Falcons when it comes to just winning games. He is the most proficient winner. Um, and to, to, to a lot of our surprise, a lot of your surprise is not Matt Ryan. Um, Michael Vick had a all time record in Atlanta of 38, 28 and one. He had a 57% winning percentage. So, um, you know, we hadn't, we don't have a long list <laughs> of good or great starting quarterbacks, but for the quarterbacks that played for the Falcons and started at least 50 games, Vic has the highest winning percentage at 57%. Uh, Matt Ryan's percentage, I think, was 54%. So you have to keep that in mind also when you talk about things like this. Another thing, Vic also has the highest winning percentage in the playoffs for, for Falcons quarterbacks who started at least four playoff games. He has a 50% winning percentage. You know, so those are some more numbers, you know, um, to throw that way as well. And a lot of people don't talk about it. And it's, it's probably not really much of much of anything to talk about. But Vic did finish second in the MVP voting in 2004. Now, Peyton Manning did win that thing unanimously. But, you know, hey, that's a nice feather on your cap as a, you know, young quarterback. I think Vic was, what, about 23, 24 years old at the time. He was, he did finish second um, in voting that year in 2004. So um, just a few numbers to throw out there uh, about Vic and, you know, his accomplishments as a Falcon. Again, winning 57% uh, of the games that you started here. I know for a lot of franchises, you know, Packers, Steelers, Patriots, you know, that's nothing to write home about. But for the Atlanta Falcons, 57% of the games, hey, Pretty dang good for us. Just got to be honest. Um, also, let's talk about, um, let's compare him to like some guys who who did make the Falcons ring of honor. Um, first off, let's just go down our, our entire list. The 2004 inaugural class, we had William Andrews, Bart Kowski, uh, Tommy Nobis, uh, Jesse Tuggle. Uh, those were the guys that were initially inducted when we introduced our ring of honor in 2004. And 2006, Jeff Van Note, he, he got inducted into the Ring of Honor. 2008, Mike Ken got inducted. And Mike Ken played here. He probably has the longest tenure of any Falcon in history, I, I think. I think Mike Ken played here about 17 years, y'all. Big Mike Ken. Uh, and also, Claude Humphrey was also inducted in 2008 as well. 2010, we had Deion Sanders go in prime time. 2013, we had... Gerald Riggs, 2017, we had Ward Dunn. 2019, we had Roddy White. And just this year, we had Todd McClure. So it's not a lot of lot of names, you know, on that list. Now, let's compare him to let's compare him to some guys that did go in. 
Warwick Dunn, as we know, he wasn't drafted by the Falcons. He was drafted by the Buccaneers, Tampa Bay. Now, Warwick Dunn also played here six years, just like Michael Vick. Warwick Dunn is in the ring of honor. Um, and I will say this about Warwick Dunn real quickly. I have no issues with Dunn being in there. I think he's very deserving to be in there. The thing that the thing that Warwick Dunn has done since he's retired, um, building homes uh, for sing, single family, well, excuse me, single mothers, um, giving them homes, and his charitable contributions that he's done. Um, to me, that 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 just goes beyond words, and he's and he's been doing that ever since he's retired. He's consistently doing that, so I, I salute Ward for that. Tip my hat to him for that also. But he was here six years just like Mike Vick. Ward Dunn was a good running back for the Falcons. Make no mistake about it. I remember DVD. Uh, Ward uh, made just one Pro Bowl, and I, I'm not talking down on him or anything. I'm just comparing him to the subject at hand, which is the Michael Vick. So in six years in Atlanta, Ward made just one Pro Bowl. Uh, also didn't make an all-pro team. Michael Vick, again, he made three Pro Bowls. Um, now, being that Dunn didn't stay here a lot, he didn't have like a, even though he was a good player, he didn't have like a stellar resume in Atlanta. Uh, only played here six years. They they kind of <clears throat> they kind of made work wait about 10 years before he, he got inducted. Dunn retired in 2008. He was inducted, into, inducted in the Falcons Ring of Honor in 2017. So he had about a 10-year wait. Uh, which, which I think was pretty, you know, pretty fair. Uh, then I, I got our guy, my guy, my favorite Falcon of all time, Roddy White, uh, played his entire career in Atlanta. Um, Roddy officially retired in 2017, although he didn't play in 2016 after being cut from the Falcons. And Roddy got inducted almost instantly. He retired in 2017. The Falcons put him in there in 2019, and I'm happy to say I was at that game. I got to see my boy get his red jacket on. Everybody was smiling. Uh, he gave a nice speech and all that stuff. But they only Roddy only waited two years. You know, when he officially retired, they put him in almost the very next season, and Roddy deserved that. You know, Roddy uh, for the longest time was the heartbeat of the Falcons, so Roddy deserved to go in there just like that. Um. Also, let's talk about Dion. Vic played here six years. Dion, Dion Sanders only played here five years. But hey, let's make no mistake about it. When it comes to be a football player, Michael Vic, much love to Vic. He's he was nothing, <laughs> nowhere near close to Dion's level. Dion was one of the more dominant NFL players at his position uh, of all time. I, I see a lot of top ten list top top 10 NFL players of all time list. Dion is on those lists. I've seen some top five lists and Dion has made it. Dion came in, Dion came to Atlanta day one was a dominant, uh, cornerback special teams guy. Uh, Dion made multiple pro bowls in Atlanta. Also made multiple all pro teams in Atlanta. Um, so even though Dion only played here five years, he only started here 63 games. Um, and Vic started 67 games here. So Vic actually started more games in Atlanta uh, than Dion did. But still, uh, Dion definitely deserves to go in our, our ring of honor without a shadow of a doubt. Dion retired in 2005. They put him in in 2010. So Dion waited about five years. Um, he probably waited longer than a guy like Roddy did because he didn't play here as long as Roddy. Roddy played here double the amount of time that Dion did. So playing here five years and only waiting uh, five years, that says a lot about Dion also. Let's talk about Gerald Riggs. Gerald Riggs was inducted into our ring of honor also. Gerald Riggs played here seven years. He, he had 66 starts uh, for the Falcons. He did make three Pro Bowls. Now, when Riggs retired, like I think it was 1991, you know, didn't, you didn't have the ring of honor. You had Rankin Smith still as the owner of the Falcons at the time. The ring of honor came with Arthur Blank. So it made sense that Riggs had to wait because of, you know, kind of where he played. Again, he played here seven years, and he did make three Pro Bowls. Uh, the most recent inductee, Todd McClure, he played here 13 years, started 195 games for the Falcons. Mud Duck did not make any Pro Bowls, did, did not make any um, 
all pro teams. He's not going to be on anybody's list as one of the best offensive linemen ever, nothing like that. But Mud, the, Mud, Mud Duck, excuse me, Todd, he, he was consistent for the Falcons, only played for the Falcons. He retired in 2012. He made the Falcons Ring of Honor in 2022, so they made him wait about 10 years. Um, so just wanted to go and compare that those guys, their wait time, their accomplishments to, to Vic, um, you know, and, and how, how it contrasts with one another. Personally, do I think Vic should go in? Yes, I do. Uh, I do think Mike Vic should go in. Um, Vic really, like I said earlier, man, watching Michael Vic play for the Falcons, that was some of the most exciting football of all time that I, I've been privileged to watch. And I know football is not about all about excitement. You want to win, too. Um, unfortunately for us, unfortunately for Vic, situations happen he had to lead the team but i think the, the impact he made football wise um the culture the cultural impact he made on the falcons the city of atlanta um without a shadow of a doubt the most popular player in atlanta without a shadow of a doubt um i remember when roddy uh I, well i remember when they had the legend special uh, in Atlanta, the last regular season game against the Saints before the Georgia Dome was tore down. And they brought out all the guys, all the legends. And uh, Vic and Roddy were the last guys to come out. Now, there was rumors that Vic would be there, but, you know, being in the stadium, none of us really, really knew. But there was rumors that, hey, they're going to bring Vic back today. You know, but none of us never knew. So they called Roddy. They called everybody's name out. The last two were Vic and Roddy. They called Roddy's name out. The crowd went crazy. Roddy, Roddy. And when they, I'm telling y'all, when they called Michael Vic's name, man, you would have thought they called Michael Jackson's name. The people in that dome went fucking crazy. I'm talking about, I, I thought the roof was about to come off. And people were... People were sitting down and they got up and started shouting and you seeing people crying. It was total pandemonium in there, man. I mean, real rock star, icon, international superstar type of thing. You know, I'm talking Michael Jackson, uh, the Beatles, Beyonce type of type of reaction when Vic name. I mean, boy, it was so loud in there. So. Easily the most popular Falcon of all time. Uh, with all that said, I do think you have to put Michael Vick in there, even with, with the past and the history. And um, I'll just finish up and I'll just say this. Um, I think with his relationship with Arthur Blank, um, I think Blank, I'm, and I'm I'm assuming, you know, I don't know for sure, so y'all don't get on me about my assumptions. I'm assuming Vic, uh, Blank wants him in there because Arthur Blank didn't have to re let him retire as a Falcon. Vic did retire as a Falcon, you know. Uh, well, I'm sure you guys remember he did retire as a Falcon, and uh, when they were when he did retire as a Falcon, um, I do want to read something that Blank said the day that he retired as a Falcon. Um, it says, and this is a direct quote from Arthur Blank. He says, "Life is really all about learning from your mistakes, redemption, learning to be a better person, moving on, and making a difference in the lives of people." Uh, there are many people I know in life who have done that, and I would and I would say none more than Michael Vick. And he says something very key toward the end here that we're talking about right now. He says, he says Vick and White, Roddy don't matter anymore because he's already in the Ring of Honor. But he he did say Vick and White would certainly be considered for the team's Ring of Honor. And um, I think Arthur wants him to get in there once again. Arthur isn't getting any younger. And I do think Arthur wants to put that red jacket on him and give him a hug, you know. And I just, I, I think that's something Blank wants to do. I think they're going to make Vic wait a good 10 years. You know, he's not going to be a five, seven, two-year guy, of course, like some of the other players we talked about. But I think they're going to make him wait about 10 years. Like I say, Arthur isn't getting any younger. So I would not be surprised. Uh, Vic retired in 2015. So don't be surprised in 2025 when the Falcons make the announcement that Michael Vick will be inducted into the Falcons Ring of Honor. And um, if, when that does happen, that'll be a sellout game. 
and people are going to lose their minds once they start playing his highlights on a jumbotron. But um, I'm a little bit long-winded on this video. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I could talk a little bit more about the subject, but I know people don't really like long videos on YouTube. Um, but I'm going to close this off. My opinion, my final judgment, yes, Michael Vick, without a shadow of a doubt, deserves to be in the Falcons' ring of honor. That's my opinion. I would like to hear your opinion. Let's talk about it in the comments. If you agree, you think he deserves to be in the ring of honor, put it in the comments. Let's talk about it. Also, if you don't agree that he should be in the ring of honor, please let's talk about it also. So if you don't think he deserves to be in the ring of honor, comment that in the chat. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it. Hey, that's all I got for you right now. Like I always say, I will see you the next time I see you. Peace.